Hi guys, today I want to show you how to draw maps for fantasy novels. Now, this is a technique that is going to be using free software and free resources that are available online that you can use and download on your PC. But before I get into that, I want to show you some examples of maps that are in fantasy novels that I liked, that I think are what I'm trying to aim for because I like the way they present in the book. The first one I'm going to show you is from the Chronicles of Narnia, and this is a uh, an anthology that I picked up at a bookstore. Uh, I've got other copies of this, but I like this one because it's a black and white presentation of it. And it's very bold in its presentation. And the map itself is probably done in ink on uh, paper and they digitized it to put in the book. But it's very easy to read because it's basically monochromatic. It's um, you know, black and white and it's using very easy font. And you can see the details of mountains, rivers, streams, forests, whatever it might be on this map. And so this is kind of what you want to get in a novel if you're especially going to be printing it in black and white rather than having a hard to read uh, map. Now I want to show you another example of, uh, of a map that I think is uh, fairly easy to read. And that one is from this book right here, uh, The Sorcerer's Daughter, and it's from Terry Brooks. This is a map that will appear in many of uh, Terry Brooks's other novels as well. And this one is uh, pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, but I originally saw this as a color poster, and I think they, they they made it grayscale and put it in the novel because it does present well as a grayscale as well. It's using, again, some of the same kind of things that you'll find in the map that we saw from Narnia, except this one is probably originally color, but you see bold fonts that are easy to read. You see crisp iconography. You see a lot of things on the map that are easy to follow and understand. And that's really what you want to aim for in a map as well. So we have two examples here. Uh, they're similar and they're different in different ways, but they're both uh, black and white maps that you're going to find in fantasy novels. Now, I claim to be an artist, but uh, I did take a, a couple of attempts at drawing a map. And I'm going to show you how I produced my map in, in my book, Enemy of My Enemy. And I use the same technique uh, for other maps that I've drawn. And this is my map. Again, again, I'm not saying it's the best map ever, but I think it does a good job of capturing the essence of what we saw in the other uh, maps where we have bold um, fonts and iconography. It does communicate uh, what we're really looking for in a map. So it does the job. And again, I'm not saying that this is a great map. I think the other ones look better than mine, but at the same time, I think it does work. And I think it does help show the, the reader the world in which the story is taking place. So with no further ado, let's go right over to uh, content and let's learn how to draw these kinds of maps. Before we get into the content, I want to tell you about my upcoming novel, Legacy of the Legend, and it'll be coming out in just a couple of weeks. I'm going to show you the map that I drew for that one. And that this map is the actually the map I drew for Shadow of the Demon, and it also appears in Enemy of My Enemy as well. This is the very first map I ever drew for a fantasy novel, and I don't think it's that great. I think I've improved on the, my technique since I drew this one, but in any case, it's still using the basic flow that I'm going to show you today. I've had to uh, work on it and tweak it some so I can get better quality maps. In any case, this is the map that will be appearing in my upcoming novel, Legacy of the Legend, which will drop in a couple of weeks, and I'll make a more general announcement when that becomes available. Without further ado, let's go figure out how to draw maps for fantasy novels. So the first thing I'm going to do is install a font. The font I'm going to be using on my map is called Black Chancery, and I'll link it in the video description below. Now, a word on fonts is you want to get a font that's kind of blocky as well as calligraphic. Now, the calligraphic fonts are going to look better on the map whenever you get done with it, but you want something that's kind of blocky like this one is so it's easy to read on a small map. Calligraphic fonts don't scale well, so they get really hard to read, especially on something that's really small like a map that's going to be in a book. And this one strikes a balance between the two, and that's why I've chosen it for the font for my map. Now, installing the font's pretty easy. Usually just double click it, and on Windows, it'll just pop that window up like we just saw on Mac and Win Linux. It'll do the same thing. It doesn't really matter. It's really easy to install fonts, but do this before you start GIMP. The next thing I want to do is install a couple of brushes that are going to be used for some of the things that we're going to be using on our map, like mountains and towns. So for this one, I'm, I've downloaded two, and I'll link these in the video description below. First, I'm just going to unzip them. On Windows, it's pretty easy to do, but on Mac and Linux, it's similar. But what you need to do is find the brushes folder. For Windows, you type in percent app data percent, and then you find a folder called GEMP. And then you open up that folder and then copy and paste the brushes into that folder. And then that will install the brushes for you. 
So with that done, start up GIMP and your brushes and your fonts will be installed. So I'm gonna create a new file for my map and I'm gonna set it up to 3840 by 2160 for the resolution. That's a pretty decent sized map. So that'll get you a lot of screen real estate, make a nice detailed map for our purposes here. And that will create a blank canvas to, and then I'm gonna fill it in with black for the background. And then I'm going to use the free select tool basically just to draw the borders or the outline of the land masses. So the black will kind of represent the water. And then this is going to be the outline of the land masses that I'm going to be having here. It could be an island, a continent, whatever scale you're drawing for. It could be an entire world, a part of a continent. It's really not important that you have your scale set here, but you just kind of want to draw the outline of your land masses and to differentiate that from water. Then I'm going to fill it in with white. Uh, and then I'm just going to use the bucket fill tool for that. And so I'll have something like that. And then from there, I'm going to blur the edges of this. So I'm going to go over to blur, do a Gaussian blur, and then just drag that over to the right. So you get a nice blurry look to it. And that's just going to have a blur that looks like this. I'm going to add a new layer now. And I'm going to call this layer cloudy. And what we're going to do is add in some noise to this so that we can apply it to this so that we can have some lakes and some nice looking edges on our landmass. So go over to render noise and then go to solid noise and then just drag X and Y size to the right detail to the right. And you can click new seat if you want to, but it's just going to create some noise. that looks like clouds. Next thing we're going to do is adjust the brightness of this. So we're going to go down to uh, brightness and contrast. If I can find that there it is. And then I'm going to slide the brightness up to about 40 or no, about 70 or so. And that, that's going to give me a nice bright looking cloudy layer right there. And then we're going to come over here to mode and I'm going to set this to multiply. And then it's going to merge it with our background. And then I'm going to merge this layer down so that it creates a single layer. And then I'm going to go over here to color and I'm going to click on threshold and you can play with this and you can see what that does for it. It kind of creates some nice looking jagged edges along your border to make it kind of look more natural. And it's going to create some uh, holes in it that can represent bodies of water if you want to choose those. But in any case, just kind of drag it around and we can uh, clean it up if there's some, uh, if it's uh, too, uh, too much unwanted uh, bodies of water like lakes. So to do that, I'm just going to create a, a brush that's just solid white and set the size. I'm just going to erase some of those uh, you know, holes that it creates and leave some of them behind because it's going to create some lakes in the map so that I can have bodies of water in addition to the uh, original bodies of water that I had. But in any case, once it's all done, you'll have something that looks like this. And from there, I am going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it land. And the land layer is basically just going to be for the land. And then I'm going to create another layer for water and basically going to separate the two, but I'm going to leave this on the background. That's going to be the basis for those other two. So to do that, I'm going to go to select by color. And that's basically just going to let me select the white. And then I'm going to click on my land layer and fill that in with green. Uh, so that it's going to represent my land and uh, fill that in with green with a bucket fill. And then I'm going to go up to uh, select and I'm going to invert the selection and that's going to select everything else. And I'm going to fill in the black on my water layer with blue. So I have green and blue. So now I'm going to add uh, some aesthetic elements to this. I'm going to add an outline to the landmass. Basically, I'm going to call it border. And what it's going to do is give a little bit more contrast between the land and the water. So to do that, I'm basically just going to leave the selection as is. I'm going to go to grow and grow it by two pixels. It's going to basically increase the radius about two pixels of the selection. Then I'm going to fill it in with black. And then uh, just use the bucket fill tool for that. And then I'm going to drag my land mass layer up. And, and then you can now have a nice little border around the edge there. To get a little bit more contrast, I'm going to add a, another layer to this, but I'm going to do alpha to selection. I'm going to grow that again. And this is going to represent like the continental shelf or, you know, just like a shallow area off of the coastline. So we can grow it by about 10 or so or, or more. And then I'm going to go to select and then feather that. And that makes it basically fade off as, as you get closer to the edge. And then uh, you can fill that in with uh, a new layer, create a new layer, call it shallows, and then fill it in with white. And uh, the shallows will basically represent just like the edge of the map. 
Uh, it's going to be kind of stark when I first do it, uh, but then you can go over to the layer and um, set the opacity. Make sure that you drag your border about on top of it so that you can see it. And then I'm going to set the opacity for the shallows just to kind of make it transparent in nature. And so you get down to where it's kind of kind of blue, but not quite all the way as as dark as the background. So it gives you a nice uh, effect where you kind of have that shallow look uh, on the edge of the map. Now I'm going to start drawing elements to the map now. And basically, I'm going to start with biomes. So to do that, I'm basically going to select the alpha on the land again. And I'm going to use a brush. Uh, that's got a wide feathered border to uh, draw some of the biomes, basically deserts, uh, grasslands, forests, that kind of thing. I'm going to start with you know, Arctic, what's white, just kind of swipe across the top there. And if I didn't like it, you can always undo it and just kind of you know, using the selection to keep me from drawing over the water, but it's just drawing on top of the layer that's represented in the biomes. And then you can add in some desert. Uh, I'm going to use like a brownish color for that or a tan color. And you can you know, draw that across the top there. I'm not trying to figure out where I want it. And let's, how about that right there? Maybe too much. Let's try that. And um, then you can draw it across there. There's going to create a desert that's kind of on the north side of this uh, continent or island, whichever this might be. And from there, uh, I can then choose some other colors and add in some other biomes as I want. Uh, I think I'm going to add in a dark green for forests and uh, kind of draw some force across the southern side of this uh, particular landmass here. And the, the light green will then be the, the plains, if you will. So grasslands or shrublands or, or, or woodlands. And then the, the dark green would be your you know, more thick forest or maybe even jungle, depending on uh, where your uh, landmass is located geographically. So now that I've got the biomes laid down, I'm going to add a new layer for mountains. Now the mountains are going to be where water is going to kind of start and flow from. So typically rivers flow from mountains to the sea. So you'll want to put your uh, mountains on first and then draw your rivers. And I'm going to be using the brushes that I imported. So you can see that I have inside of my brush palette here. I have a couple of brushes here. I've got a uh, figure out where I'm going to put these um, and I got to change the color to make it uh, black. So it looks like they're you know, kind of sketched on there. And that's, this is kind of a, a sketchy cartography, I think is the name of the brush set that I downloaded and imported. And I'm just importing that and then drawing these on there. So I'm going to draw this mountain chain using a couple of different brushes and then connecting those using uh, you know, the, the brushes will sh give you the uh, feel that you're not just using the same uh, stamp over and over again. And that's kind of what you want to go for is just you know, drawing a mountain chain or something like that where it feels like it's more naturally drawn. And then you can go back and kind of fill in some of the holes with uh, some of the individual mountains that are part of that brush set as well. And it makes it kind of look pretty natural and nice looking uh, once you get it going and once you're done with it. So that's and that's how you draw mountains. Now that the mountains are all there, I'm going to draw some rivers to do that. I'm basically just going to use a new layer call it rivers and and then on top of that i'm basically going to get a small brush about five or six pixels wide with the uh, with blue i'm going to use a hard brush here um, and then shrink it down to about you know, five or six pixels wide it didn't be very wide and then i'm just going to use blue uh, to represent the river so with that you can basically just draw uh, the rivers from the mountains to the sea um, i'm going to start off uh, black okay i need to change the color um because i am on black because i drew mountains and set it to blue and uh, I can draw from the the lake right there to the sea and then I'm probably going to connect up that lake by way of a river to the mountains to show that it's being fed by um, the water from the mountains down to a lower elevation then from there down to the sea that that makes sense geographically and the same thing's going to happen on my other lake over here that I'm just going to connect to the, the sea as well. And that's what you want to do for all of your rivers. And you want to have a few of those depending on the number of rivers that you have on your map. So the next thing I'm going to do is change my color back to black. And then I'm going to add a couple of layers here. Uh, I'm going to create a new one for cities. And I'm going to create a new one for terrain. Uh, basically what I'm going to do uh, on this map is I'm going to use that brush set that I have uh, imported to draw the terrain. By that, I'm not talking about mountains in particular, since I've already drawn the rivers and the mountains. I'm talking about things like forests and hills and other things like that. So I'm going to drop in uh, forest uh, that are part of the palette that I have available as brushes. 
I can draw in deciduous forests and swamps and grasslands and or arboreal forests, uh, hills, uh, anything that is a part of that that same uh, set of brushes that we imported. And you know, here I'm just drawing some deciduous forests that are kind of in the southern part of this uh, particular landmass here. Um, and you also have individuals uh, trees that you can kind of fill in uh, if you want to. As a let's speed this up a little bit and. Um, draw some of these evergreen forests right here, or arboreal forests. Let's put some hills in this. Um, drop a few hills over here just to make that kind of look like it's some hillier country there. And then you got a couple of different hills to choose from. And uh, you, you know, kind of, kind of play with it however you want to do that. You know, it, there's a lot of uh, brushes that you can just kind of drop on there and uh, for it to represent whatever it is that you're trying to draw. And I'm just, you know, drawing hills. I mean, nothing in particular. i uh, getting kind of picky here with what I want my hills to look like. In any case, uh, you can drop those on there. And uh, once you're done with all your terrain, you can then uh, start kind of adding the cities to it. So the cities are gonna be a little bit more, um, adding cities is pretty much the same as uh, adding anything else. Just pick your particular brush and just drop them where it makes sense. You want them to be close to resources, such as water or close to the sea or close to, Something that might be a trade route or whatever it might be, you know, and then different uh, different brushes can represent different kinds of cities. You have larger cities and smaller cities or towers or villages, whatever it might be. You can uh, select the icon that kind of uh, epitomizes the city that you're trying to represent by whatever it is that you're going to be putting onto the map. And once you have all of your cities there, then you can then work on getting the roads in place, which is what we're going to add next. So drawing roads is like what we did with rivers. We're going to add a new layer and just call it roads. And um, then we're going to get a brush that is going to be a small brush, about five or six pixels wide. And we're going to use a brown color uh, for our roads. And we're just basically going to connect all our cities together. And that's pretty easy to do. Just zoom in and just draw roads between the cities. So I'm going to start from this village over here. And I'm just going to draw it along the coastline here. You want your roads to make sense too. You don't want to draw roads that cross impassable terrain like swamps or high mountains or things like that or dense forest. And there's this particular road is kind of following the coastline and wrapping around and crossing over a river and then uh, following the coastline back down to the city. And once you have that, you uh, you can do that for the rest of your roads and you have a network of roads that you can work with. Now, once I got all of our roads down, we can label our map with our font here. So I'm going to choose a black font and set it to about 65 pixels and use uh, black chancery thin and just start naming my cities and my, my geographic features. So, uh, you know, you want to you know, figure out what the name of your cities is going to be. I'm not going to get into naming for this. I'm just going to give some some random names to these cities just to uh, show you that I'm, I'm using the font. And it's fairly easy to read on this map. And uh, it does look good, I think, with that calligraphic effect, but it's a blocky font, so it's easy to read, uh, even at small sizes. So I'm going to import a layer here. I'm going to link this in the video description below. This is a parchment file. And what I want to do is kind of give this an age look. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, desaturate it, uh, basically just drag the saturation uh, to the left. And then um, what I can then do is do color to alpha, and this will give it a nice aged look to the map itself. So you can leave it like this if you want to, and this is great for color presentation, but I wanna make this so I can print it in black and white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the biomes layer so it's just green and blue for now. And then what I'm gonna do is save it, you might wanna save it off, and then we're gonna flatten the image. So flatten the image just collapses all the layers down to a single bitmap image. And then from there, we can go to desaturate and we can use color to gray. And what this is going to do is basically convert this to a grayscale image. So we have something that we can use in a book that is going to have black and white text. And this is what I would do if I was going to be printing this in a novel and I was going to be using black and white text without any color pages. And this will allow me to have a readable map, something that doesn't have a lot of contrast in the actual background colors like we see in the color presentation. Rather, it's going to be black and white with that, but I will have very bold text and the iconography will be bold, as well as all of the terrain iconography that I put onto the map as well. So the presentation of this will work well for a novel.